keep it down. Quiet. You'll see why here in just a second. First up, let me tidy up just a little bit before we get going. Clearing off the reviewing table. Sorry. My bad. Clearing off some ammo. Ooh. Okay, what I'm talking about, dude, is this. If we're going to be doing this porn thing, you and I, we're going to have to keep it low. At least for the, the intro. So first up, check six. What do you mean? You're six o'clock behind you? Has your boss left the room? Your wife. They have perfect. Enlarge the screen, dude. Check out this porn. It is awesome. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. What kind of porn are you talking about? I'm talking blade porn, bro. Can we all just agree this is a beautiful knife? I'm going to talk normal tone, so put your headset back on. Check six. All through the review, make sure you're boss does not come in the room and bust you yet again watching the TMP knife show you guessed it this is the Ed Shimp Bowie knife it's a looker beautiful knife we talked to Ed a few months back always enjoy visiting with him interesting guy gentleman insight he and some other designers and I sat at the table he talked about this knife this knife porn and what his design goal was pretty much to make a folding knife that is a tribute to the old west Bowie knife hence the name Shimp Bowie part of his ethnic series once again it's a worker though I love the lines of it beautiful knife application though what would you first think this knife is for you? We call it philosophy of use here. Always have, always will. That's right. Collecting. A lot of the other ethnic series I'm going to roll on the table by way of comparison. I'm still talking in my inside voice. I guess I can talk normal now. A lot of the other knives <laughs> are discontinued. They're gone. We've always said we kind of like that. Collect this one soon enough, it will be discontinued, and I think it will increase in value because most limited edition things that have a demand will. How about EDC? Would you EDC this one? Nothing. Uh, do you want me to tell you what you want to hear, or do you want me to tell you the truth? The truth, good, good. I like that answer. The answer is absolutely not. I would not EDC this knife. Nope. And I guess we'll have to cover that here. We're going to jump ahead to ergonomics and handle. Now, in our discussion with Ed, which was, again, really fun, fascinating. But it doesn't mean that I will always see eye to eye with a, a designer and vice versa. It's totally normal. That's acceptable. And Ed knows that. He and I have had a lot of discussions. He will tell you if I'm if I can remember right, and I'll roll in the footage about how he designed this this handle to fit into your hand. And we're kind of talking ergonomics and handle construction here, like this, where it's actually going into the middle palm. And he says, as such, you don't need jumping, you don't need any traction. And I I do believe that it does fit that way. However, others in the ethnic series and a lot of other spider coats for that matter, to me feel more ergonomic there's the truth so for that reason I the handle for instance for me feels cramped it just feels small yes I understand the design philosophy but it doesn't work for me that great we're talking EDC utility knife uh, I wouldn't use it for that reason alone as far as the blade shape and stuff we'll visit that super briefly here in just a second <clears throat> how about fighting knife um, how about no for me, I would never choose this to be a tactical blade. Just me. To me, it centers on presentation. It centers on collecting. 
it's special, it's cool, and that's why I introed it with the knife porn intro. I kind of like that, by the way, it's pretty funny. <laughs> because it's such a gorgeous knife. Organic, flowing, it's a striking blade. Enough with PLU, you can figure the rest out. Size, weight, and feel, it's uh, a bolstered knife. Brass bolsters here, you can see. I'm generally not super enthused about them, still. It's pretty light though at 5 ounces for what it is. 3.7 inch blade, pretty close to that. Flat ground, well, flat ground from this portion here. And it's S30V powder metallurgy steel. We talked about that at the round table as well. Ed was there, uh, Gail Bradley was there. Good time, really good time. Check out that video, by the way. And we they talked a lot about the powder, powder metallurgy steel as I interviewed him and kind of asked them some questions that as a knife guy I was interested in. The blade shape is again an ode to the Bowie blade shape and I think he did an excellent job. I told Ed and I'll say it again here in tabletop form and I'm going to roll in the competitive option of the Navaja 5.2 ounces. I thought it was a little bit reminiscent of the Navaja. Now uh, Mr. Shemp will tell you they're, they're really two different approaches this is the old Spanish design, Navaja design. This is more of the American buoy design. But just at initial glance about how it dips down here, this grind here, they to me seem kind of similar, right? I love the Navaja. And actually, to be honest, that is a bolstered design. And I I love the Navaja. One of my all-time favorite of the, the ethnic series. As far as practicality, I mean, you may choose to EDC this. If I ever gear check you, I'll just give you a super high five. So don't let me influence you with it. <laughs> but it's got a beautiful sweep. It's really sharp out of box. No surprise. Spider Code does such a great job. The steel is an excellent choice. I like how it has flats up here for consistent angle sharpener. So easy to work that. It is a Taiwanese produced blade. So you'll have to deal with that. But the quality levels, as we've seen through the years, phenomenal. If it has a Spyderco name on it, and apparently the Shemp name too. I love how he puts his logo there. Of course, most designers do these days. It's a cool blade shape, though. I like it. Speed. Liner lock. No surprise. It's fast. Let's check blade retention super quick on the Edge Shemp buoy. Nice. Centering. Look at that. Perfection. Timing and lockup on there. Cool. This one's on loan, so I didn't do any cutting tests with it. The brass is, again, going back to that intro, really awesome for knife porn because it contrasts so well against the carbon CF handle scales, don't you think? It's something different. Like if we go back to the Navaja, that had stainless and CF. Good looking combination, no doubt. Brass is something different, and it also is a throwback again to the old buoys of the American West. And Ed said that as well. So that's why he chose brass. It's really cool. It's just such a cool theme knife. Lockup, flawless, no issues whatsoever. And handle we talked about already. I do like that there's really no sharpness here. I'm talking about on the corners. It's a solid back design on this liner lock. You might be asking, well, if the handle was longer, would you like it? Um, very insightful, actually, if you ask that. And the answer is yes, I would. I, I just feel cramped. I like to hold the whole handle on, with a knife with this blade length. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I feel like the balance is too far forward for me. And I don't feel like I'm really super in control. I feel I'm really cramped on the blade. And it's kind of there. Just keeping it real for you. But some dudes may just totally love the ergonomics. They should love the looks for sure. It carries in God's intended orientation, that is tip up, buries deep. It's that hard wire spring steel clip spider code does on a lot of blades. Here's the Navaja by way of reference. Basically wearing the Endura Delica clip on it, which I like. No issues at all. Carries deep though, and it looks good, and it doesn't add any weight. Let's take another listen as this thing cracks open. Quiet on the set, please. Oh, solid. 
Speaking of which, how about durability? What do you think? I think it should be great. Again, S30V, good steel. Takes an edge, holds it pretty good. Not a miracle steel, but good enough. I like it a lot better than some other steels, like 154, for instance. It is a bolstered knife, brass in this case. Makes a knife pretty strong, giving it, I don't know, maybe a little bit more torsional rigidity in prying tasks. You know, prying open a paint can lid, cutting your carpet. Who are we kidding? I don't think a lot of guys are going to be using this knife for that. Do you? Let's keep it real. I think most of them are going to go into collections. They won't see hard use at all. And in that philosophy of use, the knife will last forever. Again, if I gear check you and you are hard using your shimp buoy knife, I will be impressed. It'll be cool. The knife is put together though. It is a liner lock, like we said, captured liner lock. Great. Now we go on to, very quickly by the way, some competitive options. And they're all going to be in the Spyderco line for this video, for this knife porn video. We already saw this one, right? The Navaja. Quiet on the set, please, as we listen to this. Oh. Oh, daddy-like. That's knife porn right there. Well done, Ed. Well done. By the way, this actually broke down on us, and we had to send it back to Spyderco, and they fixed it. This knife is out of production. Told you it'd be collectible. The Navaja. Weighs about the same, 5.2 ounces. It's just a funky blade, don't you think? And it does have jimping. And man, this is a pretty much can-do-anything knife. I would classify this as a tactical blade for all the reasons I've always said. Same steel, S30V. More of a conventional spider code clip. And look at the handle on this. To me, this is what I'm talking about. If we were to compare handle sizes, we'll line up with the bolsters. About the same, right? But it seems, I don't know, right here, it's just, I can hold it better. That's just me. Here, because of how that's flared out and my thumb has to lock here, I can't go far further forward on it. I just run out of room. How about this? This is not really in the Ethnic series, but I'm going to review it separately. It's kind of on the table, so let's not, let's talk about it. The J.D. Smith, out of production, limited edition, VG10. That's a cool knife cool knife no jimping on it so I added a little stretch right there I'm gonna put it up on our web store push it on down the road so we can get some more money for Moblates same clip four-way positionable it's really like an Endura G10 just with a sweeping Persian style blade that's how I think of it. it's not really Persian it's just upswept blade really a cool knife super thin and light at 4.2 ounces really cool sorry Ed that's not your knife but I still like it Probably probably our all-time favorite Ed Shimp Ethnic Series knife. You've seen it before, ladies and gentlemen. Come on down. Give a warm welcome to the Barong. Discontinued. Eat your heart out. 4.2 ounces. This is a pillar-constructed knife. Also liner lock. Also no jimping. I don't think Ed likes jimping that much. He, he, he thinks it kind of ruins the aesthetics. And he also says, hey, if the handle's designed right, you don't need it. That's, that's his philosophy. Leaf-shaped blade, full flat grind. We just love this knife. I sure would like to see it with this clip on it, though. Like a fold-over clip that just really hides in there. Look at the handle, the ergonomics on the Barong. I'm sorry, they just dominate the Bowie knife for me. And then last, definitely not least, and this, by the way, will function for my review within a review. This thing right here, can you guess? Can you guess? Take a peek, take a peek. Dead Shimp Persian. Oh, I like this knife. That really is the Persian blade design. And I, I kind of like Persian blade designs for knife fighting. Oh, I'll never knife fight. <laughs> but a lot of guys never will, and they like collecting the style. You get it, right? FFG. This one, I think, is in VG10. It is. Yep. No jimping yet again. Come on, Ed. So I put run a skateboard tape there. It will not stay there forever. It will come off. I wouldn't 
a knife of this quality and beauty, I would not generally homemade jimp it with a Dremel tool, as you've seen before. I wouldn't. Solid black, solid back design, lock back, and that is traditional. Strong enough. I mean, it's not a triad lock. This is not something you want to go baton with, as I've always said. And the liners are skeletonized in the Persian. The handle of the Persian, I really dig. I love it. Works great for me. By the way, I didn't show you the stop pin on the barong. Look at that right there. Uh -huh. Take a look at the one on the buoy. Make sure that's focusing. I really like the contrasting. Look at the fitment too between the CF and the brass. So those craftsmen in Taiwan, they're doing a good job. Okay, and then we've already looked at Navaja. Oh, I love that sound. It's very cool. So, other than the J.D. Smith, these are all Ed Shimp designs. And they're all wins. Uh, if I had to rank order them, let's just end the video with that. What would you think? Uh, this is kind of hard to do, actually. In other words, and I'm just going to go by way of EDC. The knife, the knife I would love to carry, that you would most likely see me carrying. I would go Barong, Persian... Mm. Navaja buoy. Oh, did that surprise you? That's just where I stand. But understand this, the margins are very small. They're all very cool knives. And uh, we'll end with the porn exit. I'm kidding, of course, of this beautiful knife. And I really think that's its strong suit. It's just good looking, great to look at. You know what would be really cool? You have your Ed Shimp buoy knife in a case right next to your full-size Bowie knife. That is a presentation. Nothing fancy. See ya.